Hello everyone and welcome back to the second part um, of the tutorials on how to operate the local electrode atom probe. Um, the second part now is on, um, on how to insert your samples. Generally, what do samples look like? What do the pucks, what do they, the sample holders, which are the pucks, which are called pucks, look like? Um, and so on and so forth. And most of all, this is about how to work how to keep your lab environment clean. So the step of taking your sample from your sample preparation, which is gonna be a topic for a different tutorial. Um, again, we're installing screen capture cards also for the Focus Ion Beam system, so I hope we're gonna be able to broadcast from them shortly as well. But once you've got your samples, how do you get them into the Atom Probe, okay? And, um, in order to do that, we've got a, a lab bench set up, so I'm still in the... Um, Hello, and welcome back to my tutorials on how to operate a local electrode atom probe. Um, so in the first video, we had a look at the general layout of a LEAP instrument, and you know that it's all ultra-high vacuum, and we need to keep it clean and everything. And so the next step we're looking at is actually how to insert samples into the atom probe. Um, specifically, the part uh, of putting your samples into the, uh, into the sample cartridge, which is called the puck. Uh, they call them pucks. And um, from there on, moving into the atom probe. Uh, the second part of moving it into the atom probe will be a separate tutorial, because for that, I need to connect the... Uh, uh, leap control computer, so the Atom Probe's control computer to the screen capture device um, so that you can see what you need to do when you, uh, or how you need to operate the, uh, the Atom Probe. So now we're actually here at the, at the workbench in our Atom Probe lab. You can see it's a normal table, which is okay, it's not ideal. Ideally, you'd ground, the, uh, you'd ground your work area, um, so you connect it to, to, to electrical earth. The reason for that is that the samples are, um, are small and pointy. Um, so if you get any static charge from walking around, and we've got linoleum floors here, which is pretty, pretty bad in that regard. Like when I walk around in winter, especially my winter shoes uh, seem to be a problem there, and I touch any door handle, I, I always electrocute myself. Uh, and it, and I'm, I'm a human being, so I'm about a meter 80 tall, whereas a sample, it's a couple of, a sample at the tip is only a couple of nanometers wide, so you can imagine if that gets a, gets electrocuted the same way, uh, then this is like you've been struck by lightning, essentially. So um, I've seen in a lot of labs that uh, the people have unresolved issues with specimen failures, and I think very often that's actually because uh, they don't keep themselves grounded very well. Anyway, the second really important bit is that we need to work clean. And what that means is simply that um, we need to, in our entire work area needs to be free of dust, free of dirt, and free of, um, free of grease, most of all. So one of the big problems is moisture and grease from your fingers. Um, and uh, that is um, something we need to keep away from our samples uh, at all costs, okay? Uh, and I'll show you in a, in, a, in a minute how to do that. And this is actually a lab practice that if you're in our lab, you need to stick with that lab practice. Another hint is if, you're, uh, if you have long hair, uh, you need to tie up your hair. Uh, the reason for that is that if a single, you know, just a single hair brushes, brushes across your sample, your sample is gone, your sample is dead. And it might just, you know, it might just go across the carousel and take out a couple of samples. We'd have, we've, we've had things like that happen as well. So if you've got long hair, tie up your hair. Um, okay, the first step is, of course, we need to prepare our work area. We need to prepare our hands. So in order to prepare the work area, I lay down some aluminium foil. Um, the aluminium foil, if it comes fresh off the roll, it's free of grease, it's free of moisture, if it's been stored in a reasonably dry environment. And most importantly, also, it's free of dust, okay? Uh, and this is why every single time you uh, insert specimens or take them out, you need to lay down a fresh layer of aluminum foil, okay? This is very, very important. Even if it's just been half an hour, 
if you have a close look, you will see there is dust settled on the surface, which is something we really want to avoid. So um, always put down a fresh layer of aluminum foil. Uh, the aluminum foil obviously you can touch with your bare hands on the sides, just not in the middle. Um, the aluminum foil to use, of course, you can go and just use household aluminum foil. Um, the problem with household aluminum foil is it is very, very, um, it is very thin. So if you crunch it up a little bit and unfold it and crunch it up, what you would get is you will get little uh, pieces of you get little pieces of aluminium foil, little flakes uh, come off, and if they get into your system, into your atom probe system, it will actually uh, settle on uh, settle on the seal and the sealants, and you will have leaks. We've had a leak like that before already, um, and uh, we could trace it back to actually the thin aluminium foil uh, rubbing off flakes. So what is thick? Thick is uh, buy some laboratory aluminium foil. We use 30 micron. Um, that's pretty much the thickest available. And it does a really, really good job. So let me just get some of the foil and I'll lay it down for you. See it? We've got a piece of thick aluminium foil. And on the side, I've touched it, I can move stuff um, anyway. But don't touch it in the middle. That's where our work area is going to be. So um, the next thing we need is actually the, uh, um, um, the, the atom probe, the specimen carousel that we're going to be working with. And I'll get that out of the atom probe. Um, and for any work with any of the... Uh, um, with any of the... Um, the, 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 the tools or anything, we're going to wear gloves. You always, if you work with UV, HV equipment, you cannot touch UHV parts even with the gloves. Always remember that. So anything that goes into UHV, you cannot touch even with gloves. But anything that touches things that go into UHV, you can touch with the gloves. Okay? Uh, gloves uh, in labs, you usually have vinyl or, um, or latex or, or nitrile. Which one of the three uh, doesn't actually matter all that much. Um, what matters, though, is that they're not powdered. If you've got powdered gloves, never use powdered gloves. The, the reason should be pretty obvious. The powder will go everywhere into your vacuum system, and that's really, really bad. Okay, No powdered gloves. Uh, when you take the gloves out of the box, touch them in the middle, so you won't be touching the ends of the gloves with... Uh, with your crazy fingers. Okay. That's all good. Uh, and this is our basic, uh, our basic work setup. Um, of course, we need tools. So the tools here you'll find in the toolbox. Uh, toolbox, same story here. We've got aluminium in the toolbox that keeps it from touching any of the parts that weren't previously cleaned. So uh, changing that uh, occasion is also a pretty good idea. Um, all the tools, when you initially use them, should also be clean. Most of all, the ends of the tools um, with isopropanol or, uh, or methanol. Okay? So this is what we need to move the specimens around, of course. And now we're going to get the specimens. In order to get the specimens out, we've got this, um, this transfer rod here, which we've got in a, uh, a little thingy that protects it from dust. And the transfer rod is, has a simple action. So it's got a little button at the end. If you press it, um, a, uh, a cone comes out. And that actually, when a cone goes in, it, it, it uh, it opens up the, uh, the sort of little tube thing here, and this is how it jams onto the, uh, onto the specimen carousel. Of course, here, same thing as we had with the aluminium foil. If we do that, there will be, over time, there will be, I mean, you can see that there is wear on it, which means over time there's little flakes of brass coming off, uh, and um, the brass should also not go into your, you can see if you, just went over it and you probably can't see it, but if you, if you do this and you go over it, you will see there's brass flakes everywhere. And you don't want them to go into your ultra high vacuum system either, okay? Um, the end, you also should not touch with your gloves. 
even if your gloves are clean. Um, but yeah, I think now I took off more uh, more dirt than I actually um, than I actually put on there. Uh, if it gets dirty or from time to time, a good idea is to put it sort of up to here into uh, into a bath of isopropanol or methanol and sonicate it for half an hour and then dry it afterwards. We've got a, a special drying furnace as well where it can dry at 200 degrees or 250 degrees for a little bit of time. Um, and that really makes sure that the, uh, that the gear is all clean when we work with it. Um, Okay, so now I'm going to get the samples out of the atom probe. I've already vented the load lock of the atom probe so I can get the samples out. So I'll just grab the rod and get the samples from the atom probe. Okay, I'm back, and um, so when you get the, the rod out, you'll see it sticks out of the bottom a little bit, uh, which means it doesn't sit flush, so just press the button, it will sit flush, okay? Um, so now I'll grab another tool that we have here, which is just to show you what the, the specimen carousel looks like. So you can see we've got a carousel, there's three of those carousels is, uh, are in the atom probe, um, which um, are usually occupied by different types of samples. So the bottom carousel we usually use for calibration samples and so on and so forth, uh, and local electrodes to store local electrodes. Um, the one in the middle is usually for samples that need to sit there because they're waiting uh, to, be, uh, to be measured in the atom probe uh, to do an experiment. Uh, that we are going to do an atom probe experiment on, and the one in the top carousel are the ones that have already been measured and can uh, can leave the atom probe, and of course the ones that that, uh, that are going in. Um, the carousel has three notches on the side, um, so you can see, you know, these the notches like that notch here. There's three three of those, and we will um, see later what the uh, um, what the deal is with those. So the individual specimen holders are uh, these little fellows here. So you can see they've got this sort of little diamond shape. So it's a diamond, if I've taken the measurements right, it's a diamond. It's essentially an equi, um, equilateral triangle with 60 degrees on each side. Anyway, um, that was my estimate, I haven't tried to reproduce one yet, to produce one yet. Or maybe I will eventually. Um, anyway, so the, and, and they've got this little mechanism at the end that is used uh, to fix them in, in, the, in the chamber. So I'll just show you here with the, uh, you can see at the end, this, this little thing at the end twists, okay? Um, this sample here is a typical sample that, um, okay, this is actually not a typical sample. So this, it looks like it's a sample for electro polishing, uh, which means it's sort of, it's crimped. Let me see better if I do that maybe. It's uh, crimped into a copper tube. Um, the copper tubes we just get from um, model tra train model supplies. You can usually get them from art shops. And, um, With those in, in those tubes, uh, after we clean them, which we can crimp in the samples, um, usually electro polished samples, or lift outs where we attach samples at the end, fib lift outs where we attach samples at the end of, 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 of single wires. Um, this one here is actually a special one. It's a sample that has been mechanically ground with a special mechanical, uh, with a special machining tool, diamond machining tool. Uh, with a precision of about two microns. So it's been machined down with high precision to about two microns precision. So you just need to do a short FIP thing after mechanical grinding, which takes about three minutes. It's a great, great thing, but it's not published yet. So anyway, it's not something you're gonna have. Um, the other type of sample that we have in here 
are uh, samples from Liftout. As you can see here, they have these um, Liftout coupons on them. So there's a little holder for the coupons, clip-on holder. And um, on the clip-on holder, it's a silicon chip with, I think it's 22 pins. Uh, and on each pin, you can put a sample um, after lift out. So we use those as well. And the third type of sample that we have is, oh, let me get a pair of tweezers. We didn't have one here on the top carousel, but essentially this is a sample holder that can take something like a half TM grid. There's actually special ones for atom probe tomography that you can get. Um, and I use them very, very regularly um, for one reason that I can do TM or mostly actually STEM. So in a focused ion beam system, uh, I've got a setup where I can do scanning transmission electron microscopy where I mill, while I mill. And so you need a sample where you can look through. Um, We've also got a little specimen retainer. Oh, we've got a, some of those where we can uh, use electro-polished sample, we can screw in electro-polished samples. Okay, but if you do a project, we'll probably have a conversation about how to best do your uh, um, samples anyway. These are the different options anyway. Um, and um, this is how you, um, this is how you can fix your different types of samples. Okay, um, now in order uh, to, put it to, to put the sample in and out, uh, you can see the pucks have little screws at the end. Maybe I'll take one out again so that you can see. And notice only touching things with gloves. Oh, wrong one. I think we'll just take one of the wire samples. So, you can see the pucks have screws. Let me get something so I can point. Okay. So you can see at the end here, there's a little hex screw. Uh, and this hex screw we will open um, in order to take samples in and out. Um, in order to do that, you don't actually need to take a sample out of the carousel, okay? So you can just leave it in here. Just leave it in the carousel. We very rarely actually use this tool. That's why it's packaged, uh, packaged away and off because we, we very rarely need to use it anyway. Um, so in order to take your sample in and out, um, you need the, uh, the hex key, okay? I'll move it up a little bit so that you can see a bit better. So we need the, the hex keys, this, this tiny hex key that we have. Um, and of course, you need a pair of tweezers. Um, and the way to do that is you use your tweezers like this and your hex key like this, okay? Then you just twist and it will go out, okay? So now I've got it on my pair of tweezers here. Um, and of course, if you take your, you put your new sample in, whole thing in reverse, and just tighten it with, just tighten it with your, with it, uh, with your index finger and your thumb. If you need any more force than that, then it's too much force. Okay. Um, while you're moving your sample around, you might actually be tempted to look at your sample, to have a close-up look. When you have a close-up look at your sample, stop breathing, okay? Very important thing. You can have a close-up look at your sample, but while you do that, your breath is actually a source of moisture, like a really bad source of moisture. So if you look, uh, if you look at any of the UHV things, like the carousel or the samples or anything, close-up, hold your breath, okay? If you need to look for, a, uh, for an extended period of time, look, another look, uh, look the other way, breathe out, breathe in, and then look at your sample again. Of course, you can breathe in, but you can't breathe out, okay? It's an important thing. And also remember, again, if you've got long hair, tie up your long hair. Put it in, and then just thumb and index finger, and not more, okay? 
and then you would have your sample in um, and it would be ready to go into the atom probe. Um, so that's it so far for, for the pit, bit of um, putting your sample into the, into the carousel. Uh, of course, if you do that, you need to check which carousels are free. So of course, if there's an empty one, you can put it into to the empty one. Um, all the pucks have numbers, um, so you need to remember what number you put it in, of course. Um, and if you take out someone's sample, um, of course, you need to make sure that that sample has already been has, have, has already been measured in the atom probe and so on and so forth, and then you're not randomly destroying someone's sample. Uh, and if, but if you take it out, and you know that it's possible uh, to take it out without uh, destroying someone's work, then we've got this um, we've got this little handy square thing here, um, which has letters and numbers on the side like a chessboard, and you can put it in here and you can write down um, you can write down on a, on a sheet of paper, so there is a, a block of paper next to the uh, um, next to the uh, to the work area where you can write down, okay, sample of this and this and that went to D1 or went to E1 or went to I don't know B4, something like that. Okay, um, just make sure that the samples are not getting lost. Uh, for sample storage, though. Um, we have these, these little boxes. We've got aluminium boxes, so this is an old one that I have. Um, the new ones look similar, they're just a little bit bigger, so they, they can they, my old sample can take 16 and this can take 20 samples. No, I think it's six times, I think it's six times four. It might actually be 24 samples. I don't, I don't remember. Anyway, this one carries a few more samples. This is my old one that I made years and years ago. Um, and it's got uh, it's got 20. No, it's got 16 spots. Sorry, it's got 16 spots for samples. Um, and you can screw the lid down with screws, which means it's very safe to you know move it around, ship it, and so on and so forth. Okay. Um, but if you need one of the specimen containers, um, just talk to me, and we might be able to provide you with one um, for the duration of your project. Of course, these things are machined out of solid blocks of aluminium, so we will want to have them back once you're finished with your project. Okay, so now we've got the sample in. Uh, we've really worked in a nice and clean environment, uh, and this is a good start for an atom probe experiment. And as soon as I've got my video capture card, we'll carry on um, with the work we do uh, putting the sample into the atom probe, and then we'll go through the user interface and what the different bits in the user interface do, um, and um, what you need to, which, which need buttons you need to press to to put your samples into the into the uh, to the leap, and then later on how to do experiments using voltage atom probe and laser atom probe mode. All right, um, so that's it for now, and uh, we'll continue once we're set up for uh, 